Sometimes where you sit on the plane can make all the difference on whether you have a good flight or a bad flight. Today, I am going to go over all of the pros and cons of various seats in the plane, plus give you some tools so that you can find your best airplane seat every time you fly. Let's go. Hey y'all and welcome. If you're new here, I'm Christy, the Gen X Gypsy, helping you to travel better so you can focus on creating unforgettable memories. Now we all know that business class and first class seats are the best to have when you are flying, but the majority of us are not flying business class or first class most of the time. Today's video is going to be focused on finding the best seat for you in an economy class flight. Let's start with where on the plane you actually wanna sit, the front, the middle, or the back. The obvious pros to sitting in the front of the plane is that you will be one of the first people off of the plane when it lands. So if you have a tight connection or you're just somebody who really needs to get off of that plane quickly, sitting at the front is going to be your best choice. Some of the cons to sitting in the front of the plane though are that it does fill up very quickly and a lot of airlines charge a premium rate for getting those front of the plane seats. It means that you probably won't have an empty seat next to you. It also tends to be the cooler part of the plane. And although I am saying that as a con here for some people, for those of us who get hot flashes, being in the coolest part of the plane might not be such a bad thing. As for the middle part of the plane, this tends to be the most stable part of the plane, which will not incur as much turbulence when you're flying. If you happen to be a nervous flyer or somebody who gets a little motion sick, being in the middle of the plane is probably gonna be the best choice for you. If you like to look out the window though, the con for sitting in the middle is that you're usually over a wing. So you're going to have that that wing in your sight or the props or the jets or whatever. It's not gonna be a clear view down to the ground, which if you're a nervous flyer, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> in addition, because you are over the wing and near the jets, it's also one of the noisiest parts of the plane. And finally, for the rear part of the plane, one of the pros is that it does not fill up as quickly. Most planes ticket sales go from the front of the plane to the back of the plane, leaving the back a lot more empty. So if you're looking for the possibility of having an empty seat or two next to you when you fly, you'll want to choose a seat at the back of the plane. You will also be a little bit closer to the lavatory, which could be a pro or con, depending on how close to the lavatory you are. Just know if you choose the very last row in the airplane, those seats probably won't recline. I had that happen to me on a red eye one time. Uh, it was a situation where I couldn't choose my seats ahead of time. It was a super, super, super cheap ticket. And I ended up in a seat that my seat didn't recline. But the bonus was I didn't have anybody sitting next to me. So it all worked out in the end. Another note for sitting in the rear of the plane is that the flight attendants tend to hang out in the lobby back there and they may be chatty. So if you're looking to want to sleep while you're on the plane, being super close to the rear might not be the best either. And the last con for sitting in the rear of the plane is that it does move around a lot more than the rest of the plane when you have a little bit of turbulence something to keep in mind. Again, especially if you're a nervous flyer. Now that you've picked out which part of the plane you want to sit in, it's time to talk about seat choices. Aisle or window. I mean, we could talk about the middle seat, but who in the hell actually really wants to sit in a middle seat if they don't have to? The only time I sit in a middle seat is if we're traveling together as a group and we all want to stay together. And then I'll take one for the team and sit in the middle seat. The aisle seat is great for people who feel like they need to stretch out a little bit more. When people aren't walking by and the flight attendants aren't doing their service, you can, you know, stretch your legs out into the aisle and maybe lean over a little bit into the aisle. It's also a great seat to sit in if you're somebody who maybe needs to go to the lavatory a little more often than other people. In addition, it can feel like you have more headroom when you're sitting in the aisle seat, so it's probably a great selection 
for tall people. Some of the cons to sitting in an aisle seat are that when people are going by and the flight attendants are doing their service, you might get your shoulder or elbow or even feet kind of knocked or kicked around. And you will have to get up and move in order to let the other people in the row get out to use the lavatory when they need to. As for the window seat, the biggest pro obviously is that you potentially have a great view to look out the window. But studies have also shown that the window seat is the seat that you're least likely to get sick in on a plane because you don't have all those people brushing up against you. Another pro to the window seat is that you do have that wall that if you're going to sleep on the plane, you can rest your head on that wall and maybe be a little bit more comfortable while you're sleeping. Some of the cons for sitting in a window seat are that you will have to ask your seatmates to get up and move when you want to go use the lavatory. Another con-ish con <laughs> is that the window seats do tend to be the coolest seats on the airplane. Like I said before, for those of us going through menopause, having a cooler seat is probably not such a bad thing. But for those of you that get really cold easily, it could be something to think about. Let's take a moment to talk about bulkhead seats and exit row seats. These seats usually give you a little bit or sometimes an extra bit of leg room, but a lot of the airlines will charge extra for these seats. The bulkhead seats are the seats that are located behind a wall. So it could be the wall that's dividing first class from economy class, or it could be the wall behind a lavatory. Regardless, if you have a wall there, you have no place to put your personal item and it will have to go in the overhead bin above you. In addition, the bulkhead seats are often used for people with disabilities. So if you book a bulkhead seat, you could arrive at the airport and end up getting changed out of that seat because somebody needs to have that bulkhead seat because they're in a wheelchair or they need the accessibility for getting in and out of that bigger area. So just be aware that a bulkhead seat booked is not necessarily a bulkhead seat guaranteed. As for exit row seats, again, you get that extra leg room, but there are a few requirements. You do have to be over 15 years old in order to sit in an exit row, and you have to have strength, mobility, and dexterity in your arms, your legs, and your hands in order to be able to help in case there's an emergency. There are also some unwritten rules about sitting in the exit rows, and those are that you should not be drinking during the flight and you should not be sleeping during the flight. And the last decision that you'll need to make about your seat is whether you want to sit on the left-hand side or the right hand side. And when I'm talking about left and right on the plane, I'm talking as you are seated in the plane and you are looking towards the cockpit. Do you want to be on the left? or the right. Some of the things that you will want to take into consideration for making this choice is if you are planning to sleep on the plane and you want a window seat, you will want to choose one on the side that you normally rest your head when you sleep. So like I tend to sleep on my left side of my face when I'm sleeping at night. So I would want to choose a left-hand side window seat so that I'll be able to rest my head more easily or more like I normally do at home. I mean, you know, as best as you can sleep on a plane, right? And if you are choosing an aisle seat and you're planning on working when you're traveling, you might want to consider based on your dominant hand. If you're right-handed, well, if you're right-handed or if you're left-handed. Like I'm right-handed and if I wanted to work on my laptop or do some writing or something while I was flying and I wanted to get an aisle seat, I would probably choose a left side aisle seat so that my right arm could be free to do all of the work that I want to be doing while I'm flying. I mean, let's be real. I don't get a whole lot of work done <laughs> on the flights. I try, I really try, but generally speaking, I end up with my nose in a book and and that's it. Finally, if you know that you are going to be flying over some really cool sites or when you're coming into land that you might be able to see something of the area that you're going to from a particular side of the plane, you might want to do some research on what side you would want to be on on that plane in order to be able to see whatever site it is. An example is that when you fly into Portland, Oregon, many times when you are coming in for a landing, you're going to fly past Mount Hood 
which is up in the Cascade Mountains, and it's a beautiful sight. And it you get pretty close. It looks really close up, but you need to know that you should be on the left-hand side of the plane in order to see the mountain, because you're not really going to be able to see it from the right-hand side of the plane. So those are the situations that I'm saying that you should take into consideration. A fantastic free tool that you can use in order to pick your best seat is SeatGuru.com. And I'll have that linked below in the description so you can go check it out. All you have to do is put in your airline, the date you're flying, and the flight number, and it'll populate a map of the plane and it'll give you information on all the different seats. So it helps you narrow down your best choice. Now, if you're a ways out from your flight actually taking off, it may not have that information yet so you'll just want to keep checking back as you get closer to your trip. If you're wondering where I like to sit on the plane, I am a window seat person. I love to be tucked into my window seat. I don't generally have to get up and use the bathroom very often during the flight and I like being in my own little kind of bubble over there by the window. I also like to sit close to the front of the plane because I do like to get off of the plane as quickly as I possibly can. Because by the time we've landed, I do need to go potty. But I also like to sometimes sit in the back of the plane if I know it's not going to be very full and it's likely that I can have one or two seats empty next to me. But honestly, that has not happened for a really long time. Wherever you do end up sitting on the plane, make sure that you follow the unwritten rules of flying. And if you don't know what those are, then check out this video next. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you so much. Continue to share your tips and tricks in the comments below so that the whole community can learn from you as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you like more travel inspiration, hacks, and tips, then you know, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.